Hey guys, good morning. Um, I want to read through this passage. Uh, we're in John, and this is chapter 10. But I'm going straight to Jesus asserts his, who he is. All right. And this is important because I, I've heard and talked to people that have close family or loved ones who are, they, they have no faith in the Lord. They're not saved in him. They're not with him. And they need to know if they're not with him, they're by uh, default with the evil one. And, you know, I've said it before, there are two spirits at work in this, in this world. That's it. You've got Satan and you've got the Lord, period. End of story. And I've been trying to figure out how to put a message together. So I got my Bible out and, uh, and I opened it right. I, I opened it and then flipped it to the left just, and I literally landed right on this. Um, but Jesus Christ is the only weapon we have against the snare of the devil. Okay. When, when we're talking about a lot of the churches being compromised, um, one thing I did not go into, and, and, I, and I've known this, but there's a lot of satanic uh, agents in churches pretending to be Christians. And I just call them wolves in sheep's clothing. And then there's a lot of pastors who are secretly Luciferian, who know scripture better than anyone, who get uh, lay hands on people, but they're really cursing people. And it's, it's, all, over the, it's all over America because we have not been sober-minded. And the pastors have not been sober-minded. But this is very key because when you know it's only Jesus, the Son of God, that is it, Jesus Christ, then you start to hearken to his voice and the voice of the Father, and then you can separate them from the enemy. So I'm going to read it. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in, in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If you be or thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, you believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name that bear witness of me. Oh, I, I, I just, when I hear the words of the Messiah, I get, I get fired up. So excuse me, but ye believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all, the great I am. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you show me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, Thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Guys, so many people out there are lost. It's because they've been running from the truth. And some of them, they just deny the truth. 
running from the truth and denying it, flat out just denying it and saying that's, I'm never going to believe that are two different things. Because running from the truth, that is a proximity alert in your soul and spirit that when you hear the words of Jesus, you know it's true. But when you start to follow them, it brings about accountability. It brings about repentance. And repentance, if you look up the word, it means to have a change of mind. A change of heart. When you hear people speak and say things like, I don't need forgiveness. I try not to do things that I have to ask forgiveness for. They are flat out wolves. Because they deny the power of the Messiah. Why he came here, died, was resurrected for the remission of sin. And I think this is a much bigger problem than we're willing to admit. We have people in our families who love not the truth because there is no truth in them because the Lord is not in their heart. And I think that we need to start recognizing that some of these people continue to pray for them. But just like in my dream when I chose not to run towards that wicked pyramid, the days of Noah dream, I chose to turn around and choose the living God. Because the Father showed me something that a lot of people right now are drained and weary. It's because they're putting energy into old wineskins. Sometimes that wineskin just needs to be cast out. And that is, look, I never started this channel to tickle the ears of people. I heard that once and it, it was in my spirit and then I heard it and confirmed it. I, I just never was. Because I'm not doing anyone justice if I'm just tickling ears. Be careful what you put your energy into and the people you surround yourself with. Some of these people came in your life simply to either test your faith or to just be a drain on your salvation. Let's stay sober-minded and aware in all things. And let's keep watching for the Lord. I think that these situations are more prevalent now in this day and age than any church age. I love you guys. Bye.